Now this really did take a weird turn. Polaroids, vacuum tubes, and that stupid thing. Protato. Oh my god, it's one of those old ass 70s or 80s Polaroid things. The ones that are the basic box of the, Yeah. Holy cow. This is fucking amazing. Isn't it? This is our new mascot right here. A punching bag. I hate, I mean, messy. Yes, I spent 40 or $30 on a bean bag in the shape of one of those damn toaster things. Jokes aside, here we have a nine. 19 something. I have no clue. These Pol Polaroids in general just have a very weird timeline because there's never any actual data or information or whatever about when these cameras come out. Now, this could have come out during the 70s, maybe, since it says time, not 70s, maybe late 70s, early 80s. But. This is an XX70 camera. That means it's gonna take SX70 film. Now I have mentioned in the past, or have done in the past, put separate film in here. And I complained how it comes out all weird or overexposed or whatever. The camera itself is fine. You know, there's nothing much going on with the camera. The only thing that's going on is the chip that really drives the shutter and the exposure and everything. What the problem is, is the film itself. Now here is a box of empty 600 film. And if you look on the back of it, you notice that it specifically says 600 cameras. This isn't a 600, this is an SX-70. You know, it, it kind of throws me off sometimes when I say that, just because of, um, when you say the phrase SX-70 in the Polaroid community, it's more of, oh, the folding one. I don't own one of those for now. But what do you classify this as? You know, if somebody were to randomly get one of these, they're just going to automatically assume, oh, we'll get the blue film. They used the film, and it's like, oh, it came out all shitty. I have some early shots. Why did I just crush the box here? I have some early shots I shot with my button camera. And I used to question, oh, what the fuck's going on? Well, at the time, I didn't have a flash module. And I have really shitty LED lighting in here. And occasionally it flickers. I don't know if that's ever shown up on my camera. A long time ago, Paul Roy used to sell these little ND filter things that you put over the film cartridges. I'll just take this old... SX-70 cartridge here. And what you would do is you just laid over the cartridge. But then they stopped selling them, I guess, to encourage people to buy the SX-70 film. Kind of cheeky there, poor boy. So I ended up buying a third-party one. And it's in my... Sonar. And one of the nice things about this one is the autofocus. So it's basically one of these with an adjustable lens, but it's also autofocus. And it has a shorter face to it. I mean, if you think about it, you're basically using like, when you try to use this nowadays with like 600 film and doing them on, it is a massive inconvenience. And then you gotta carry around a whole flash module. A whole flash module. Just put it on the one step. He's clamping on. It's actually one of the few ones that look aesthetically pleasing. Little filter thing. So you got that going on, and you try to use this while you're having one of those ND filter things on top of here. While you have a battery strapped to here, it becomes a minor inconvenience for the average person. I mean, of course, you could buy a SX70 film, but you have to order it online. Or unless you find like a specific store that specializes in campus, but so basically, 
Trying to use one of these casually for the average person. For the novelty purposes, it's convoluted. And you're better off getting one of those. One of these Polaroid 1-600-somethings. And these are actually kind of cool, surprisingly. This isn't the topic of today's video. But honestly, these, are, these later Polaroids are actually pretty good. You know, honestly, when I saw this thing, I bought it just because, oh, it's a Polaroid. But honestly, this thing is pretty cool. It folds up. There's a little display. There's a timer. There's a red eye reducer thing. And, uh, yeah, this is one of those promotional ones, oral that, and ironically, it's um, those bitey chew stick things. So, uh, yeah, I also had to do this. There's also the wonderful flippies. This is a one of the original ones. The Sun 600 here, silver-faced. These and these, well, the 1976 model. I have it, but I don't feel like getting it. This is what I recommend to people. Or one of these thingies. Now, honestly, I use my later 90s model, and some wonderful person told me, that it came from 97, and this is from 83? It kind of goes to show you how long they've been using the same body on these damn cameras. So the point being, trying to use one of these older, plain old SX-70 box one-step cameras is kind of cumbersome. Trying to use the SX-70 film, or just 600 film in general with it. But, I thought to myself, if we could take that little ND filter or the same material and we were to say take apart the assembly of the lens and we lay a layer of that in between the lens and the little hole that exposes it if that makes any sense we're basically converting this camera to take 600 film and it basically darkens it a bit to where it doesn't overexpose for the 600 film. So essentially, you hard modded your Polaroid. And typically what you do for the folding SX-70 cameras, you take it apart, you replace the cap, and it changes the speed. But the thing is, these things were built to a cost where it's just a flexible PCB. And maybe you'll feel those weird resistor capacitor things, I'm not too sure. And it's just a chip. So essentially, you can't really hard mod these things, and that's why there's nothing online. And I'm surprised I've never seen a topic of somebody getting some of the ND filter material and laying it in between the lenses, or the lens, or behind the lens. Now, of course, you could tape it to the front, but we want this to look like the Polaroid is absolutely stock, nothing weird going on with it. You want it to look like this. Yes, even with the flash, but just reduce it down for the average person. So what we're gonna do here is we got this ND material stuff, <laughs> a whole roll of it. I originally just got it so I can make my own filters. We're gonna put it in this thing. And if this thing works out well, I'll do it to my favorite SX-70 camera at the moment. Beautiful one step camera. Out of all the one step SX70s, I would say this is one of my favorites. But it really is kind of weird how much they took the same body but just kind of rebranded. I'm looking at you, Cottos. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so what we gotta do is we take the card and we just kind of of the camera on the side. There's some clips. 
But what we're interested in is that little plastic lens that is held in by two clips. And there's your lens. Your little plastic lens. And there's your peeper hole where it exposes it. What I did here is make another piece, but I kind of shaped it out to um, fit the little plastic pegs here or whatever. We're gonna set up a little scene here. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna hold it down. See how she performs. First time using the modified SX seventy box camera. Here's two photos I took earlier with the sonar, with the ND filter. See, it's all nice, and there's that weird blue streaking issue I talked about. You can see it here, it looks pretty sharp. Honestly, a nice photo of the field and the goal. Here's one of a car dealership. Doesn't look too bad. I always thought this would be a cool shot with all the brand new cars in the background and everything. The balloons in the background.